being a leader doesn't require you to have all the answers. She's not a leader because she figured this all out on her own and she's like this magical person who can do everything. She's a leader because as soon as she ran into something challenging, she started looking for solutions and her search for solutions led her to send me a note, which led to this, which is actually going to start delivering solutions to her. Welcome to The Art of Speaking Up, a podcast that empowers professional women to rise. I'm your host, Jessica Guzik, and in this show, I take you undercover into the stories and lessons that I learned, sometimes the hard way, throughout my career. I also talk with working women, leaders, and coaches to show you that no matter what your struggle is and no matter what your career goals are, You already have all the talent that you need to succeed. Welcome to the show. Today, I am doing the first piece of a multi-mini episode series all around effectively running meetings. If you are someone who either has to lead or facilitate big cross-functional meetings and they're messy and you need to get a result and the meetings are difficult to control and you're feeling like it's very tough, this mini bonus series is for you. This was inspired by a listener who reached out to me asking for advice on this topic. And this is something that so many of us have to work on and have to get better at. And I'm really excited to share some of what I've learned over the years doing work that is highly cross-functional, that involves a lot of meetings and a lot of people and a lot of personalities and a lot of often conflicting objectives and tight deadlines and all of the things that can make these meetings challenging and make these projects challenging. I want to share what I've learned and what's worked for me in successfully pushing those forward so that you can take all of this and use whatever might apply to you in your situation. And I also want to give a really big acknowledgement and a huge shout out and just a huge like virtual high five and virtual hug to this listener for asking me this question. Because on the surface, it just looks like she's asking a question. But actually, beneath the surface, she's glowing and emanating leadership qualities. Because what she's experiencing is she's in a situation, and the situation is hard. And oftentimes, when we're in a hard situation, we might shut down, we might get frustrated, we might find ourselves in a dead end. And we might feel stuck in the dead end because it's a dead end. People who have strong leadership qualities, when they feel like they're getting close to a dead end, they start looking for alternative routes. And one of the ways that she's looking for alternative routes is seeking help and input and expertise from someone who might have been in the same situation. And that is a huge leadership quality. And I'm highlighting this to tell you that being a leader doesn't require you to have all the answers. She's not a leader because she figured this all out on her own and she's like this magical person who can do everything. She's a leader because as soon as she ran into something challenging, she started looking for solutions and her search for solutions led her to send me a note, which led to this, which is actually going to start delivering solutions to her. And this might seem kind of basic and obvious, but oftentimes when we're in the middle of a problem, we forget to search for solutions and we get so fixated on the problem itself. And so next time you are running into a problem, just remember that it's not knowing all the answers and having everything go perfect that makes you a powerful leader. It's being willing to search for solutions and then actually going and searching for solutions that's going to make you a really powerful leader. So you don't have to have all the answers that's a lot of pressure. You just have to have a willingness to go out and find them. And so today's tip and today's piece of advice for running meetings and getting the outcome that you want and moving things forward, even when it's chaotic and it's difficult and there are a lot of personalities, today's tip is actually a two-part tip because it's two things that you have to do together. And when you do them together, they can be very, very effective. So the first piece of this, and this might be something you're already doing, if so, you are well on your way to handling this, but if you haven't done this before, it can really, really help. Today's tip is before the meeting starts, and as you're preparing the content for the meeting, what you want to do is you want to have a page up front, whether it's a PowerPoint slide or whether it's in a document, whatever you're using for the meeting, or if there are no documents for the meeting, make one slide on this. 
you want one slide that lists everything that has to happen in the meeting and how much time is going to be allocated to that exact thing. So for example, you might have a slide and the first bullet says, context and introduction, five minutes. And then you might have something like project updates, 25 minutes. And then you might have something like discussion of key questions, 15 minutes. And then you might have something that says decision making, 15 minutes. What you want to do is you want to have every single minute in that meeting accounted for and you want it written on a piece of paper or a slide or something that people can see so that they understand that they're sitting in this room and that by the end of this, these are the things that need to happen. It gives everyone something to orient on because when you're just coming into a meeting and sitting down and someone starts, they're not going to be as engaged as they would be if you make it really, really clear to them exactly what needs to happen. And you can turbocharge this. So these are kind of like the tips that are two in one or three in one, but there are a couple ways to turbocharge the effectiveness of that agenda that has all of the time blocks of the meeting mapped out. The first way to turbocharge it is if you know this meeting is going to be a tough one, if you know there's a good chance that this meeting is going to be chaotic and that the things are going to go all over the place, you want to send those time blocks out before the meeting. You could do it a day before, you could do it a few hours before, but you want to send that out to everyone in the meeting beforehand and say, I'm looking forward to this meeting in advance. I wanted to share the agenda. It's really important that we get to X decision by the end of the meeting. So this is how I'm planning to allocate the time. If anyone has any feedback, let me know and I will catch you in person at that meeting. This way you've sent it out. Not everyone will see it. Not everyone will look at it. That's why you show it again at the beginning of the meeting. And then at that point, not only has everyone seen it, but there are probably some people in the group that have seen it twice, which helps reinforce that we are here to get things done and will help you get a greater level of focus. There's another thing you can do, though, to turbocharge the agenda and to make that agenda more powerful. In addition to sending it out before and then showing it again, every time you show it, whether it's the time you sent it out before or the time you're showing it to everyone right before the meeting starts, every time you show it, you want to reiterate two points. The first point you want to reiterate is the greater reason why this is happening in the first place. So for example, let's say that you need this group to agree on a timeline for a project. Let's say that's the end outcome you need at the end of the meeting. You need like 10 people to agree on the outcome of this project. What you want to open with is you want to talk about why we're doing this project and why this project is important before you talk about the outcome that needs to happen. So before you get into the nitty gritty of we need to get to X decision, we need to decide the timeline by the end of this meeting, you want to say, as you know, we're working on this so that we can achieve this. So you put it in context of the broader goal and that reminds everyone of its importance, right? It's not just about the timeline. It's not just about the tactical thing that you are trying to accomplish in the meeting. It's about the greater value that this brings to the company and it's about how this is specifically moving things forward. It reminds people that this is important and it reminds people why this is important. And you can use this both in the email that you send out in advance of the meeting you can reiterate the greater value that this project is more broadly bringing to the organization. And you can also reiterate it at the start of the meeting. So before you even go down those bullets and before you walk people through how the time is going to be used, you can remind everyone why this is being done in the first place. And if you're thinking like, well, everyone knows why it's being done, that's okay. It's okay to remind people. People have busy days. They're running around. They're in back-to-back -back meetings. They're like, wait, what's this meeting? When you can anchor everyone and kind of give people that baseline of like, remember why we're doing this, here's what we're all creating together, it kind of makes them remember like, oh, okay, that's what this meeting is. Oh, yeah, like this is really important. It reminds them of that and it's incredibly effective. So again, before you even get into those bullets, you want to put this in its greater context and you want to reference the value that this is creating for the organization. And that's what makes the project exciting anyway, right? A lot of the excitement and the fun in these things is the positive impact that they have. And so you want to focus on that first and get people excited about it and get them remembering why we're doing this in the first place. 
The second little thing you could do here with your agenda to make it more effective is to constantly use we language. We, we, we. So as you're going through the agenda, as you're talking about the greater purpose and value that the project is bringing to the company, you always want to be using we. We are working on this because we're creating this for the company. Today in this meeting, we have to reach a decision on X. What you're doing is you're creating a sentiment of collective shared responsibility through your language. So you want to use that we language in your email. You want to use it when you kick off the meeting. You want to use it when you go through those bullets and when you're talking about the greater value that this project is bringing to the company. And these are all things that help you so that by the time you're actually in the meeting and going through things, you're going to get a better level of engagement than if you hadn't done those steps. They're pretty easy to do, they're pretty simple, and often spending that time breaking up the meeting time into those smaller blocks will help you feel less stressed because you'll have something to follow as well and it can really help you run the meeting. So those are today's tips. I have a couple more coming. So if this is an area that is really a part of your day-to-day, definitely tune in. I think there are two or three more tips that I'll be sharing with you. And with that, I'm going to sign off of this bonus mini-sode, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Okay, bye.